Congratulations on winning this prestigious prize. I know it's a very, very difficult one to win. You know, we've been following GE for years. Obviously, you, you deserve it. You're leading in several clean tech fields, wind, EV charging stations, uh, solar-related products. Um, we just reported on uh, an exciting report from Lazard recently, where Lazard identified that wind power is the cheapest option for new electricity in the U.S., uh, solar is right behind it at number two. And the Energy Information Administration just announced that 2016 saw more wind and solar installed than any, anything, everything else combined. Uh, so what do you see as needed now for these industries to not just dominate but to become 100% of new capacity? What do you think is needed for them, not just in the U.S., but globally, to keep accelerating, accelerating at a faster pace? Well, I think that a lot of the acceleration that's taken place over the last 10 or 15 years has been because we collectively, the industry has worked to drive costs down. So if you look at the cost of producing wind power, it's it's a third to 25% of what it was 10 or 15 years and ago. And let's emphasize GE dominates, GE and Siemens dominate the, and, and, uh, and Vestas, of course, dominate the... Uh, sure, there are, there are a lot of good competitors, and many countries that, that really weren't receptive when when it was more expensive now see the balance between affordability and scalability because you know sustainable solutions have to be affordable, have to be financeable, have to be scalable. And I think if you look at the cost progression that we've seen in solar and wind, it's it's proven the case. It's dramatic, yeah. Hybrid applications, I think, where you're marrying power storage with with solar and wind solutions will be. I think we visited one of your first. Yeah, I think your first wind turbine that integrated storage into it, and I think it was California. One of our reporters went there. It's, and I think that is this is this become has this become the norm, or is that still something you're not yet the norm? But the technology is moving very quickly, okay. and you're getting to the point where where hybrid solar can replace. Uh, can applications where diesel is being trucked in and, and there's a cost of maybe 20 or 30 or 40 cents a kilowatt for that and you can do a combination of, of wind so wind hybrid or or solar hybrid for is that is that, of that is that a niche application in the developing world or is that, is that becoming again like a, a pretty sizable percentage of, of your market it's, and, it's growing and as we continue to work with the the power electronics technology inverters and things like that it will continue to grow because we'll continue to get the cost and reliability and uh, a few years ago I attended the unveiling of the brilliant uh, wind turbines in Chicago. That's where I interviewed Jeff Immelt briefly. And um, have you? How, what can you? Do you have stats on how those have? Been, how that has been performing? The the results that have you've been achieving? And any you know major uh, uh, partners? Since well, we have a we we have a, a, a great partnership with Eon. You know we've taken over 400 of their wind turbines, introduced those digital technologies. Over 400 have become brilliant. And they and we use laser technology to manage wind current or not to manage wind currents, but to assess wind currents and changes. We adjust the wind turbines to capture the maximum amount of wind. And where we've implemented that, we've seen a 4% improvement in efficiency. So so the, the proof statement is real. And I remember at the event, 4% might sound small to someone not really in the know. You're going from 90, <laughs> 92 to 96 in some cases. So so you're closing half the gap and what's between it? where you are and 100. And how does that translate on money? <laughs> on well, it depends on the size of the project and the, the, the price for the electricity. And we, we leave that to Eon. But the, but the payback is quite substantial. And, and that's what I mean by, by solutions that allow you to, to, to uh, uh, encourage the use of private capital. Because when, when investors see those kind of solutions, more capital goes in, you can scale the solutions, and really that, that's when it truly becomes sustainable. A good idea that can't scale or can't be financed is hard to be sustainable. And uh, are, is there any major country in the world where wind power isn't actually the cheapest option on a levelized cost of electricity basis, uh, you know, average average cost of wind? It's a hard one to answer. I know, you, I know you're in every field. We had an article five years ago, I think, that said GE wants to sell you everything because you guys do it. You're, you're 
a giant. You're a you know. We think in the near term, certainly, you're going to need a portfolio of power. You know, you still have a billion people in the world that don't have access to power. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so mainstream technologies will matter for a long time, but there's no question that, that renewable solutions are growing and will continue to grow as a percent of the total. And I mean, we did, we, we, with the Lazard report, we reported on a, a study out of Texas that that, sh that analyzed where, what was the most competitive source of new, new electricity in all the different counties of the United States. And so it picked out the wind and solar were all over the place, but natural gas was also still there. Uh, I wrote a long piece yesterday on the carbon bubble, <laughs> highlighted by the continued push for natural gas to be a bigger part of, this, of the story. It's a huge debate among clean tech enthusiasts and activists and the industry how much is actually needed. Uh, do you <laughs> that's a hard question to answer because that's a function of a number of things, including global GDP rates over the next 20 years and industrialization and and how quickly the, the developing countries will develop, right? But if, because you have to solve, problem number one to solve is power for the people that don't have it. And, and that's but with the with the speed at which wind turbines and solar panels can go up, and with the uh, with the distributed nature of them, it seems like they're just better fit for the developing world. For well, they're a better fit for some applications because you have uh, remote locations where the grid will never reach, and you can put two or three or five wind turbines in and produce some electricity where you haven't had any. So there are there are definitely applications in the developing countries which are ripe for solar, wind, at a, at a smaller scale because you, you can serve smaller population groups.